Thanks for watching the video. V-Red, V-Red, Fred, <laughs> either works. Uh, it stands for Virtual Reality Editor. I personally got a huge soft spot for this product, but massive respect for it. Tickles my pickle in all the right ways, and I'm gonna tell you why. So V-Red is, it's a, it's a multifunctional uh, visualization package, primarily catering to the automotive industry, but it's by no means exclusive to cars. More on that a little bit later. But Vred joined the Autodesk family back in 2013 as part of an acquisition of a privately held German-based software company called Pi, a PI VR, and uh, not to be confused with Pimax VR, which is completely unrelated. And mate, right, just to set the tone, early doors. Vred is, it's no joke, right? This is a niche, high-end, hardcore, serious gear used by prestigious customers with a prestigious price tag to match. Now, Vred is offered in a couple of different versions, mate. You've got the two main of interest, which are Vred Design and Vred Pro. Best way to think of those two is like, Vred Design is like Vred LT and Vred Pro. Oh, that's the one that costs 15,000 pounds per year for one license or $14,000 for one year. Uh, but mate, you can, well, you can pay with PayPal or MasterCard, so. <laughs> What's the problem? Right, who uses V-Red and what does it do? Okay, for 15 grand a year, mate, you best believe it does a lot and it does it well. But let's say you're a major car manufacturer like Skoda, Mazda, Jaguar, Aston Martin, Peugeot, Kia, Porsche, right? V-Red is used often in multiple workflows as part of their design decision-making process, their digital prototyping, stakeholder collaboration, input and sign-off, right? Along with final visualization, render or virtual reality output. Uh, there's quite a lot to unpack there, but let's start with the design process. How can what's perceived as a rendering package possibly help teams with the design process? Well, mate, it's easy. Red's got one of Autodesk's most efficient translation and data handling engines, which gives Navisworks a run for its money. Design teams can import absolutely massive data sets into V-Red, and it supports as good as every known CAD file format in the universe, and once it's in, it can, it may, it handles it exponentially better than where it came from in the first place. And this import then benefits from Vred's super high quality material asset library, which supports Adobe Substance materials with intricate UV manipulation. You can bring in 16K resolution or greater HDRI environments to replicate immersiveness. Mate, if you want to, you can simulate 2 p.m. in the afternoon on July 3rd in Los Angeles if you wanted to as an environment. You can bake on ambient shadows to simulate a more realistic scene. And before you know it, you've got an almost photorealistic digital copy of a product that looks absolutely classic. Class. But check this out, not if, but when a CAD model changes, I bet you never expected Red to have a full XREF manager for each imported CAD file. So you can just take that out of date part and then update it when a new version comes in from one of the designers. Now, Vred also supports full Python scripting and keyframe animation, meaning you can show products in full action doing their thing. And one little belter I personally love pulling out of the hat is making the most of what they call the touch triggers. So you've got objects in a scene that when they're touched or clicked, trigger an action like an animation, which is absolutely awesome. The likes of sales presentations and marketing, making objects move or uh, actions happen inside the product, like doors opening or I don't know, entities moving, components exploding, that kind of stuff. Uh, but Neil, where's all this going? How does this, how does this physically get used in the real world? Well, this is where stakeholder collaboration can come in. So once you've read scenes finished, they're, well, actually, they're, they're never really finished. But you, you basically just run out of time playing with Fred. But virtual reality editor was called this long before VR even hit mainstream back in 2016. And Fred comes alive with VR and it supports almost every VR headset on the market that matters. So you enable VR mode, and then what you've got is the most immersive and empowering VR experience that Autodesk have to offer, bar none. Stakeholders can then physically walk around a product in one-to-one -one scale with pin-sharp textures and breathtaking realism. They can then interact with the scene through either Python scripting or standard Vred triggers. They can sit in a car, they can shine a torch into a boot or into a dark area, into enclosed areas so they can see what's going on. Designers can check blind spots from a certain vantage point in a vehicle. You can toggle product configurations in VR. You can even take measurements 
Now you can check maintenance accessibility with your own hands to see if you can reach things from a certain point. And whilst all this is going on, a team around you in a boardroom, for example, can be watching everything that you're doing on a live feed on a TV, whilst also talking to you in VR, making this truly a seriously powerful collaborative design review and or a sales tool as well. But what about the likes of, I don't know, you've got a guy called Pascal based in Germany and Danny in the UK. How do we loop these guys in? Mate, Brad's even got a push button collaboration function which invites remote VR participants where everyone can then join in to the same VR scene. Everyone sees each other as life-size avatars and they can all partake in a global remote VR design review. And if that now means, mate, that two, three, or however many staff members no longer have to fly internationally every month or so to join in on these reviews, and instead they can all do it remotely, mate, that 15 grand a year license suddenly starts looking like an absolute deal, steal sale of the century to me. It's a deal, it's a steal, it's sale of the f***ing century. But if, mate, if VR isn't your thing at your company, if the I don't know, if you haven't jumped on the hype train yet, that's cool. A lot of companies haven't. It's fine. You don't have to use VRED with VR at all. It's not exclusive to it. VRED's got an extremely powerful OpenGL-based graphics engine, but just using it on a straight-up standard laptop or normal PC monitor. And basically, it uses every last drop of graphics horsepower that you've got at your disposal. So if you've got, for example, a single, I don't know, NVIDIA GeForce 2060, you'd struggle with something like that, but it'll work if you've got an RTX 3080 Ti or a, I don't know, a Pro A5000 GPU or even two RTX A6000s in a single machine. VRED will use every single last drop of power you've got. It'll put everything to 100% and use it well and make VRAM absolutely matters in VRED. That RTX A5000 that you're seeing on screen right now, that's got 24 gigs of VRAM. And VRED is using around 75% of that 80% of 24 gigs of VRAM. But if you're not planning on showing off your dis all your stuff in VR, what, what else can you do in VRED? Well, as much as you could sit a colleague or a client down in front of a VRED session and just show them what you need to show them on your laptop screen, VRED actually boasts an exceptionally powerful web streaming engine which streams your active VRED session to a web client, which is then accessible on mobile, tablet, laptop, letting multiple third parties then view what you want them to see over the web on the mobile device. They can even interact with the scene using those touch gestures on the mobile device. And mate, this bit's absolutely outrageous. Not only can the streaming tech be used as a presentation remote controller, but check this, this is this, this is inception voodoo, mate. They've basically embedded the streaming web session in this video onto the face of an object in the VR scene, onto that podium there. So you can go into VR and then you can watch and control the presentation that you're in whilst in VR using that streaming. It, mate, it's absolute madness, but that's how clever this shit is. Uh, it also supports software or user interface integrations. This can be something as pretty basic as, I don't know, embedding a website onto an object or a full QT or Qt digital cockpit web engine injection. Obviously, this is, a, this is a clear insight into how automotive manufacturers design, uh, lay out and test their in-car entertainment systems, but take anything, I don't know, like a digger, a huge five-axis CNC machine with an integrated operating system in a display panel that's slapped onto the side of the CNC machine. That can all be embedded into red and interacted with in real time using this web engine. And speaking of real-time, mate, VRED was one of the first Autodesk products to implement GPU-based RTX ray tracing. Now, I've spent a good chunk of time telling you all about all the real-time design reviews, VR collabs and all that, but at its core, VRED is an absolutely outstanding industry leader in rendering output at both still frame and animation. It supports CPU and GPU ray tracing. It can use whatever you've got on your local machine, and it can also hook into massive render farms or banks of GPUs or CPUs if you're using the VRED Core license, which is in addition to the VRED Design and Pro license. And the GPU-based ray tracing only supports NVIDIA hardware. Now, I don't have time to go into that right now, but you'll just have to trust me that there's a very good reason for why they don't support AMD. Very valid reason that AMD aren't invited to this party. Uh, it's got nothing to do with the secret golden corporate handshakes, which is what I often hear when this is brought up. Uh, but mate, either way, look, VRED's rendering output is second to none. It's ultimately been responsible for automotive sales imagery that you'll have seen, but you'll have had no idea was even a model to start with in the first place. And since enabling the GPU-based output in VRED, this has allowed for far quicker render outputs. Combining that with 
RTX denoising technology. It's made Red a seriously capable desktop and a laptop based renderer. Artists are able to conjure up scenes to match anything going on in their imagination using object or area lighting, ray lighting, photon tracing, spectral ray tracing, right, with the final output being separable as well into multiple layers for post processing the likes of Photoshop. And stop there, mate. This could go on for hours. Uh, Red also fully supports the latest augmented reality workflows, with Autodesk recently having linked up with Nvidia, Lenovo, and Vario to deliver this Porsche themed Cloud XR demo at the recent Automotive Innovation Forum. And Red was at the heart of this, handling the data set and user connections. With AR expected to increase in popularity, mate, as Cloud and 5G accelerate into the mainstream, expect Red to become more central to key conversations around XR and AR. It also puts product configurators as well on the table as well, because this is all driven by the automotive industry. That's at the core of VRED, uh, product configurators, mate. That's a key part of automotive sales, right? And VRED's got that covered. That's not just for cars either. Every single company that sells something could arguably have a configurator. But almost fine, almost finally, mate, one of my personal favorite VRED features, and one that I've actually made a dedicated video myself on the channel a while back is something called Vred Go. This is something that I don't even think this is arguable. Everyone needs to know about and something that everyone can use, regardless of the industry you're in as well. Vred Go, it's an export function of Vred and it takes your entire scene. Basically, it zips up everything that you've got in Vred into a single executable file. You can then hand that executable over to client, customer, supplier, whoever. They then open it up, no installer required, and boom, they've now got your full VRED scene in VRED engine quality. But here's the clincher. There's no IP exposed, no model tree, no property data, nothing. Just a pretty, absolute gorgeous model for them to look at, zoom around and explore. Want another clincher? You can make this Go file a VR experience as well. It'll integrate a Steam VR hook into it and then it'll just open up into a VR experience. So you can just drop the file onto a USB stick, hand it out at an exhibition, and what you've got is a next level product sales flyer that no one else is doing. Now in this video, I've no doubt used a lot of car models and automotive imagery, but mate, Vred imports native invented data, SOLIDWORKS data, step files, you name it. Just replace the car that I've shown here with whatever you make, and you've got a digital prototype, a fully immersive design collab tool for almost any industry. Like sure, a lot of the materials and many of the workflows inside Vred are tailored for the automotive market, but a lot of those workflows are transferable and somewhat, let's say, progressive. And a few industries out there could look to those workflows and consider it being maybe about high time that they thought about potentially adopting them. Right, mate. Anyway, honestly, I've got to stop there. I could talk about Vred for actual hours. No joke. If you, if you can't tell, I absolutely love this program. Uh, just a word of caution, though. A lot of the features I've talked about here are exclusive to the Pro version. Vred Design, or the LT version, is quite limited. That doesn't have GPU ray tracing, for example. No Vred Go, but it does have almost full VR support. And Vred does have, mate, it's got a super high learning curve and a high skill ceiling. That's why I respect it so much. You get out of Vred what you put in. You can tell the work of someone skilled versus someone who's just getting started versus an absolute master at Vred. I love it. Either way, link in the description if you want to check it out yourself. Thanks for watching. My name is Neil Cross. This has been Tech3D. That's been WTF is Vred. I'll see you in the next one. Toodles.